hi everyone and welcome to a new Unreal Engine 4 uh, tutorial video. This video was voted for by my patrons so big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for their support. If you want to support me head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely where a donation of one dollar will get access to loads of videos nice and early and a donation of five dollars or more will get access to the voting for videos such as this. So in this episode we're covering level streaming. Level streaming is a technique of streaming sub-levels into a persistent level for multiple reasons, mostly for optimization, but we'll cover a few other uh, hedge cases as well. If you don't know what this is, I guarantee you have experienced it in a game. For example, I'm going to cut to some Destiny 2 footage right now and you can see level streaming in action. So in Destiny 2, you have on this level the Titan, you have these little corridors between the main platforms of the uh, oil rig sort of type of structure. So that corridor there loaded up this area. So all the enemies weren't here beforehand. They were loaded in as soon as you come through here. And um, if you're clever enough with your camera or you get out of bounds, you can actually see this in action if you get outside the map and outside the bounds. You can see where things aren't loaded in, enemies aren't loaded in, nothing's there. Um, until you go through these portal-like um, corridors here's another example of that corridor action so we're going between two platforms here you have this almost needless uh, bridge and uh, semicircle room notice how it cuts your line of sight so you can't see anything for a long while and if you really pay attention to it you can feel it as you play the game you feel a slight hitch and that's where it's loaded in the new content and I do it again here so one could have been like unloading, this one could have been loading. So you've got a, a unload and a, a loading in two separate places. So in Unreal Engine 4, how do we do this? So level streaming is quite simple to set up. You need a persistent level and a persistent level refers to a level which is going to be always loaded. It's always going to be there. It's always going to be the base thing. Now, my recommendation and the general recommendation is is that your persistent level will be things that are uh, guaranteed that you're going to be needed uh, all the time so i would suggest collision so things like the ground and walls definitely other props that have collision they can come in with the level stream and definitely enemies and other actors such as that can also come into the level stream too this will allow you to make sure that if even if the player was able to skip ahead a level stream and beat the load they're not going to fall through the world and crash out. So good uh, rule of thumb is to keep it consistent with the collision. So I mentioned before, there's a couple of other ways, uh, reasons why you may want to do level streaming, apart from just optimization. So one of these things is the use of working collaborative, collaboratively with multiple level designers. You can have multiple people working on the same level. Well, how do you do this? And what does this mean? So for example here, I've got a simple level set up, like so. And I want, for example, have a level uh, where I have the roof on my level here, okay? Rather than keeping me working inside the room, I can just have it on top. So let's go uh, and do that one first. So to get access to your levels, you need to go into Window and turn on the Levels tab. I keep mine tabbed up here. It'll probably start off like this. I typically drag it up here, as it's quite useful to have up this uh, this side. As you can see, you have a list of levels. You only got one at the moment. That's your pers persistent level, and this thing is always loaded on. And from here, you can access the level blueprint and so forth. Um, so you can click on those as easy access to those uh, uh, settings. So. As I said, we're going to create an art based one which has the roof on it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into where it says levels and choose create new. And I'll choose an empty level. And I'm going to name my one tutorial underscore p art. Okay, so this is going to be a, another persistent level. Because this is some artwork I just want inside the level. I want it to be layered on. Sort of like how Photoshop, Photoshop has layers. This can also have layers. So I want to change it from being a blueprint based streaming. And just be always loaded up as a persistent level. So this blue dot means that it is blueprint based. Meaning that it's going to be streamed in. 
If I right click on it, I can then change the streaming method to always loaded. And now this will always come in with the persistent level. In the viewport, in the bottom right, you can see what level we're currently editing. Currently here, we set to uh, set to uh, tutorial P art, which is correct. That's where we want to be. And here I can select this item, which belongs in a persistent one, and duplicate it, and I'm rise it up to create my ceiling. And this will be in part of the tutorial P art. And to show you that, I can hide it with this eye toggle. And there you go. And say so it's a very good way of creating multiple sub-level art layers that you can work on simultaneously with other people. Because what happens in one doesn't affect the other. Okay, so that's how we do that. But how about the actual streaming of levels in? Okay, so for that we're going to create another level. We go to levels and go create new. And again choose empty level. I'm going to name my one tutorial S1. S for streaming. And I want to make sure I'm working in tutorial S1. With that, I want to now add some bits into my area. So this will be S1 here in this little room. So let's go into my starter content and just add some stuff to it. So when you're working with an empty level, because essentially what this is, you may get this error come up. The actor will be placed outside the bounds of the current level. Continue. Obviously, click OK, but you don't want to be doing that all the time for every single actor. For some reason, since 4.23, they've added this error message in. It's really annoying, but we can turn it off, thankfully. So go to Edit, Edit to Preferences, and in the Details box, just search for the word Bounds. And if you scroll down, you'll get Level Editor, Miscellaneous, Levels, and you'll see Prompt when adding to Level Outside Bounds. Tick that off, and you won't get that prompt anymore. So now I can add other bits to this world, like so. Do a chair, whatever it is, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, so that's our sub level setup, and I can see that by hiding it, like so. But how do I actually load it up? Because if I push play, nothing is loaded up, I can't see it or interact with it or do anything with it. So how do we actually do this? Well, for that we can use a level streaming volume. If you go to your modes and go down to volumes, you'll see an option for level streaming volume. And the way this works is that whenever the player's camera is inside that volume, it will be streaming in that sub level. So let's make this a bit bigger. And for testing purposes, I'm just going to put in a doorway here so you can see it working. You wouldn't normally put it here, um, but I want you to see it working, so I'll put it there. Okay, so I've got level streaming volume. I now need to tie that to my sub-level. To do that, you can go to your levels tab, click on your tutorial, or S1, or your sub-level, sorry. Then click on this little button next to your levels title. This will open up level details for the currently selected level which is tutorial S1 in this case. If it isn't, you can change the drop down here to whichever one you want to work on. In tutorial S1, we can see streaming volumes I have at zero array elements. Hit the add icon, and then in the none, I can choose level streaming volume. Now, I'm getting an error because I've added the persistent, the, um, the level streaming volume to the not the persistent level. Your volumes need to be part of the persistent level. So if you get this error, the way you fix it is you go back to your level and you can select it and cut it from your world, change your level working in to persistent level, and then add it back in with control V to paste it. So now it belongs to persistent persistent level. It needs to be part of the persistent persistent level because it needs to be actually loaded up from the get go. So you can actually test whether or not the player is actually inside it. So with that now, I go back to my details panel and now choose the volume successfully. I can now hit play and when I walk inside this volume it now streams in the sub level, walk outside of it and it unloads it. Okay, so that's how it works. 
But let's talk about how you actually would use this in an actual game. So, typically in a game, like we saw in Destiny, you have these corridor sections. And these corridor sections are where you overlap and trigger the loading and unloading of levels. So, a good way of doing this is taking a level stream volume and positioning it around the room that you want streamed in. Like so. And then I want to unload it. But the issue I have with this is if I go outside this room, for example, it will unload just as I leave the doorway. So I want to make another volume that stretches into the hallway a little bit. So I'll make another volume. And drag it in. And this one, you want to make sure it overlaps a little bit from your original level stream volume. And just want it going into the hallway a tiny bit. And we're going to add that as another element to our level stream volume. So go back to your levels, level detail, add a new array element, and choose that second volume. So now the level is loaded up the whole entire time. And as I leave here, it stays loaded and unloads to 27 actors. Um, if way to test this, if you look at your world outliner, you'll see the number of actors present. You see 27, that's it unloaded. Walk into the volume, change to 37. Because it's now loaded up an extra 10 actors. Okay. Now yeah, you can see it drop down like so. And typically, when I've got another level going up here, you just have it again, another level stream here, and another level stream volume in the hallway. You may want them to overlap a little bit as well. That's down to you. Um, if when you do overlap them, be aware that you will have um, a moment where they're both loaded up at the same time. It may be the case for you that you want that. It's down to you and your particularly level design. But that's it. And that is why we have these sort of corridor sections and lifts and elevators and things like that in games. It's to hide these level loads. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and supporting me on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. Thank you to all my subscribers and all my patrons. Wouldn't do this without you guys, so big shout out and thank you to all of you. That's it from me. Next time, I'm going to do a video on world uh, composition, which is a lot similar to this, but on a grander scale. So, see you next time for that one. Bye.